us moving towards the Gulf, and we do get a surface low pressure as well. Hey, Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Happy Wednesday to all of you. Hope you're having a great day today. Now, we did have a lot of storms yesterday, so I did hope y'all watched that video from yesterday. This really did a big impact, especially on Texas, on their power. Now, not only is other countries dealing with their own tropical cyclones, I show that we're going to have our own possible tropical cyclone happening pretty soon, and we need to keep on track of this. So if you've never been here before, hello. My name is Mark. I do upload every single day, just not sundown from Friday to Saturday. That's when I take my Sabbath. But make sure you hit that subscribe button because going into hurricane season, you're not going to want to miss a video. Now, if y'all want more updates on this topic, let me know by hitting that like button. I will keep you updated as far as what's going on with all this. All I ask is if you do use social media, please share on to others and let them know what could be coming soon. Now, the South did get hit with some pretty nasty storms yesterday and last night. 4.30 this morning, they were out by 55,000 homes without power. That's how hard Texas got hit. And even now, at 8 o'clock this morning, they are still sitting with over 40,000 homes without power. Now, when you look at your potential velocity anomaly, which lets you know whenever there's a low millibar pressure system that could be coming around. And as you can see here, by the 60E, you have problems going towards India. You also have, by the 120E, a possibility for something coming around Australia later this month. And they're even starting to pick up a little something that's going to happen towards the 25th and on in May. And that potential velocity that we do see does show that there will be a tropical cyclone strengthening right next to India as we go through Friday, Saturday, all week long into next week. And then it's going to strengthen down to 952 according to the GFS. Even a 950 right there by Tuesday. By Tuesday, it'll be down to 949 millibar pressure according to the GFS. Then it'll weaken down a little bit before it comes on land, but it'll still be a 960 something coming on land for y'all over there. And the Euro does confirm that it will be a 950 something millibar by the time you get to Tuesday morning, but it does show that it goes a little more east uh, than the GFS. The GFS brings it over here. The Euro shows that it'll be a little more to the east, but it still will be a 960 something on impact. And that's what this anomaly is right here for india and they have another one that will spur up around the 18th strengthen around the 22nd somewhere around australia so we still got to keep it look out for that so if you know people over there give them a heads up matter of fact if you go to tropical tidbits you'll see that the h wharf brings it all the way down to a 928 so india y'all need to have a heads up for this tropical cyclone because it is going to be coming i say that because your national center really isn't putting a big emphasis on this as they should I'm going to show you the main region where this potential tropical cyclone can form for us and all the perimeters that could be going against it and what could be going for it. Now, this is still a few days away, so we do need to update. And like I said, don't take this as set in stone because this will move as we get closer to it. However, it is showing that there is some energy in this area and there will be surface low pressures at the time, so something could form. And this is starting on the 26th of this month. And remember, this is GFS. They do have an updated version that does have more forecast confidence within a two-week period than they did last year. And last year, if y'all remember, I did do this early for you guys, and we did calculate this almost three weeks early on seven hurricanes that did hit. So it even has been upgraded ever since then. So we do need to watch out for this area and see what could happen. Because on the 26th, I do show that some energy does form up over the, the Caribbean right next to the Yucatan Peninsula. You do get some storms forming up on the 26th and the 27th as it starts moving towards the Gulf. And we do get a surface low pressure as well. And we can't see too far, but you can see it does slowly move towards the Gulf of Mexico. And when we look at the precipital water, the P-Watt anomaly, you can see it really bulge up good to some good storms around the 25th, the 26th, and then when it gets to the 27th, it starts getting real thick with heavy rainfall of whatever this is going to be, whatever this turns out to. We need to keep an eye on it. But around the 25th, if you look at composite reflectivity, the 26th, you can see it really brew up. The 27th, it really starts to get strength, and we start to get a little bit of cyclonic 
uh, rotation in that. I'll show you that as well soon. But you can see the storm does move and consolidate and go towards the Yucatan Peninsula. And as you watch this region, just watch for the wind gusts to see what's going on with these storms. As it gets to the 21st, you'll see that the energy will start feeding into the western side of the Gulf of Mexico as the days go by. Then once we get around the 26th and 27th, a good consolidated energy does form up and it does carry towards the Gulf of Mexico. And it does have over 50 miles per hour wind gusts. And I know the statement's going to come out. It came out last year also. And yes, NOAA is not showing anything at this moment. And at the same time for the center of tropical cyclones over northern Indian Ocean. They're saying in India that a depression is likely to form over Lake Shadweep area in adjoining Arabian Sea around the 15th of May. And it is likely to intensify further into a cyclonic storm. And that's the only warning that they're giving to their people right now. So no one not saying anything really don't say much to me because they didn't say anything last year when I showed these as well. Matter of fact, for the Indian Ocean... For their national center, they only put it as a 1-33% to 33 low probability for this to happen. And I'll show multiple models showing this happening and strengthening into something serious. But they got it as a low probability. And I'll show you this because I'll tell you that I know they're hurricane centers and I know that they're great at what they do. But they like to have a little more uh, surety before they just come out and give information like this for one they don't want to cause mass panic which i understand but at the same time when you have it trending through multiple models you should give it a little more than a low confidence now typically for us our atlantic basin it starts around the middle of may and it'll start becoming some hurricanes towards the beginning of june until then it's just some named storms so if you look at over a 60 year average of what's been going on with our tropical cyclones from may 1st to 10th we have had a couple brew up in the Caribbean, and that's a little earlier than what we're looking at, but it has happened before. From the 11th to the 20th, now we're getting where it's a little more sporadic. It is going on the East Coast a little bit. There is chances for more to pop up because they have popped up in the past. And I want you to especially look at these two also over here, right in the Pacific, right west of Mexico and all that. Because I'm showing that it's a possibility that energy could go that way as well. From the 21st of May to the 31st, it really gets really big for uh, Eastern Pacific, right off West New Mexico. And there is a possibility for this to go there as well. And we still have our regions for chances to pop up in this region because it has done before. Now real quick, I'll go through these so you can see them. June 1st through June 10th, it starts to build up a little more for the Gulf. June 21st through the 30th. Now it gets a really big, and especially the Western Gulf, and I'm showing energy is starting to go there already. July 1st through the 10th, now you're having no problem with that dust from the Saharan coming across, and now you're getting some possible trop tropical cyclones that will come across the MDR, the main development region. July 11th through the 20th, we have them pretty much everywhere. Then towards the end of July, 21st through the 31st, now you have it really dense in the Gulf, dense on, on the west of Mexico, and you have it everywhere everywhere is warmed up everything's ready to pop by the end of july for sure the middle of august now it's way more in the mdr the end of august now it's just non-stop tropical cyclones and the biggest month is september when it's just everywhere and trying to get as much information about this as i can uh, when i look through the gefs to see what's going on with the ensemble for possible locations for tropical cyclones you can see that right here in the Gulf that we get a couple chances towards the 22nd, 23rd for a possibility for a couple of tracks that tropical cyclones could be taken out of this storm. And if you look up here, that blue is a 980 to 999 millibar. So that would be a tropical storm strength if that would come up. But this is possible locations that this could happen all the way to the 26th of May, 27th of May, possibility now i'm not showing that it's widespread trending yet but i am showing that we have a big glob of precipital water with this system we have winds and we will have some vorticity that will be with it i will show you that but the gfs is showing it and the cfs is also showing it and it shows that it moves through matter of fact the cfs can see a little further than the gfs which is already too far as it is so take this with a grain of salt but this area is cooking it looks like 
And as TFS shows that it will go through the western of Gulf of Mexico and come out a tropical cyclone in the Pacific. So that's a possibility as well. Now the one main thing that can really stop any formation is this dust. You can see all this Saharan dust and by Friday it's going to be covering real good into the Caribbean over uh, Venezuela coming off the coast and it's feeding pretty early and it's about a month early. This would be the only thing that could stop any formation of tropical cyclones at the moment. It weighs it down and don't give it any chance for convective activity to go up. And when you look through the GO satellite, NASA's uh, dust satellite, so you can see with the dust and the aerosol, you can see that the dust does come in sometime around the 19th and it starts moving into the Caribbean, but we can't see too much further from that from the GO satellite. But it looks like it stays a little bit northern where this energy would be over here at the at this point and the dust would be more northern towards uh, cuba puerto rico and going towards the bahamas so i'm not showing that that is going to go all the way into the the gulf of mexico with that dust i'm showing it's taking more of a northern turn there is a big high pressure up there it could be sucking it around but at the same time this is not headed down here where we've seen that energy. So I don't show that the dust really will have any effect on this if this does happen. Now, when I look a little deeper into this and I put it on wind gusts at first, you can see that right around the 22nd, we start getting a surface low pressure. This is where it's at and it moves over towards the Yucatan Peninsula and it starts getting some wind gusts. And this right here is only in the 30s and the 40s. And I say only because this really does this a lot right over there that's really the main region where it starts building up but you can see at the same time we're getting storms passing through the western side of the gulf of mexico at this time while this storm starts building up and as you get later on it moves towards the yucatan peninsula it still has those are actually 50s right there that gets up to 46 pretty high wind gusts and it starts picking up even more strength and all this time that dust is is over this region and as you move forward, you can see that the energy moves with it. And we get into the last few views that we can see from this. It kicks up 50 miles per hour wind gusts again. Then it starts moving and it spits off the energy towards the Yucatan, Yucatan Peninsula. And now you got this here. And I will show you that this does have vorticity. And this has, does have a lot of capable energy and convective energy. And it is getting cyclonic rotation. As we look at the 10 meter winds, because we all know wind gust does not give a name, give a storm its name. But if you look at the 10 meter winds and see what the sustained winds of this is as it strengthens up and moves, you'll see it strengthen up and it does head towards the Yucatan Peninsula. You can even see it kind of form up the surface low pressure because there was a 1007 right here. And it does have winds around it that it needs to be worried about because they're up to 35, 36 miles per hour sustained winds 10 meter level. And as you move forward to the 27th, it strengthens and moves over towards the Yucatan Peninsula, where it's at its strongest so far, because we can only see so far. And at 10 meter level, now you're getting 38, 39, even 40 miles per hour sustained winds at the 10 meter level moving with the system. And you see a possible surface low pressure building up with some more winds around that after that. So I'm not saying that this is law and this will be on the 27th we will have a tropical storm by the yucatan peninsula it could be earlier it could be later all i'm saying is this region is fired up it is ready to go and we have surface low pressures going into this area towards the end of may so i do believe that we will start getting named storms towards the middle to the end of may and I do believe it will be in this region just for the main fact that the dust is covering the MDR. So nothing can form there. It will be here. Now as we check for vorticity at the 850 millibar level, so we can see what's going on. You can see that around the 26th that we do start to get some vorticity in the area. And it actually does strengthen up really nice uh, to, with a surface low pressure. I have shown you that. And it does move over, keeping the strength, keeping the vorticity and it moves right towards the Yucatan Peninsula, strengthening it up. So what I'm gonna do is show you the storm relative helicity, which show you the cyclonic updraft rotation, and show you that this does have rotation in it. So as we go through to 26, you still got energy over here, but now this is where you're gonna see your cyclonic rotation updraft, and that's what helicity does. And you can see the strengthening of this storm 
and it does get some cyclonic rotation in multiple locations so this could be moving as well but still in this area we do have a system that does pop up with cyclonic rotation and updraft so that is different than just regular thunderstorms now the, now the south and the southeast they will be having storms today all the way until this afternoon so I'm going to play this for you on loop so you can see this. This is from NAM 3K. I'll show you all your storms that you will be getting. And it will go over northern Florida later on as well. Let me know in the comments, guys, what your opinion is, what you think about all the information I provided. Do you think that we have a possible tropical cyclone that could happen by the end of this month in our Caribbean? At the same time, I want to praise our Father like we should every day. God bless all of you. Hope you have a very blessed and a very safe day today. I do pray through this hurricane season, whatever God's will is, let it be done. I, ju I just pray that we don't lose any lives this year. It is going to be a rough year. So God bless you all. I do want to read to you today while you watch these storms. It is on a loop. Just give me a minute of your time. Hebrews 1. God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time, passed unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For into which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and, th and they all shall wax old as doeth a garment. And as a vesture shall... Thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Amen. Have a great day, guys. I appreciate y'all for visiting me today. God bless all of you that was in those storms yesterday. That was pretty nasty. Thank you again for the likes, for liking the video. Thanks you again for the shares, for the shares for the video. I pray you all will be safe this season because it looks like we're starting early. All glory does go to God, God of Jacob. Amen. <laughs> Have a great day, my friends.